Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, so I'm gonna present a, a small project named Dragon FFI. Uh, I'll explain what is the FFI, how we can do that with Clang VM, and uh, what's next in the project. So I'm working at uh, Lab. my name is Adrian Guinet, um, with the other guy which will present after me. I'm working on the, uh, an LVM-based obfuscator we presented last fall, if you were there. Uh, so what's an FFI? It's a foreign function interface. The idea is to be able to call uh, any function from any other language. And in our case, what you want to do is compile and call C function from any language. So here is an example from Python. Uh, I can say, okay, I, I define the put test function, and then I will be able to call this directly from, from Python here. Uh, why is it difficult to do? Uh, generally, we want to call functions from higher level language. It's because we want performances, or because we have a library to read us what we want to do. Uh, but C functions are compiled for a specific ABI. There's no ABI in the standard. Uh, there's, it's, there's one ABI per system, per architecture. It's really a huge, complicated thing. You don't want to deal with it. You don't want to work around that. You want someone to do it for you. Uh, things already exist. So libffi is a, the, the reference implementation in this, in this case. So basically, how you use it, you pass uh, a vectors of uh, voids, uh, star, and you call the function, and it generates the glue for you, and it works. And also something called CFFI, which uses PyC Python in Python, uh, and uses libffi as a backend to, to do this. So why, why are we doing another thing? Um, libffi is really hard if you want to add a new ABI, which is not supported. It's You have to write hand, assembly by hand, and support everything. Uh, it's not really easy to do. And CFFI uses PyC Python, which does not support a lot of things. You can't include your own head of files, you can use attributes. So you need to rewrite your head of files in CFFI, and you don't want to do that because you can't maintain this. You don't want to maintain two head of files. So why using Clang here VM? Uh, Clang can parse C files. It's a really good C parser. Uh, supports a lot of ABIs, LLVM can compile them, so you just put all of these together. And how do we do that? We use dwarf debug information in the LLVM IR module. Uh, because you have everything you need, you have for a structure, for instance, you've got the members, you've got the size of the members, the various offsets, and everything you need. If you just take the Clang ASC, you don't have all the information. For instance, you don't know the paddings, you don't know how fields are ordered, and so on. And in the LLVM IR, it's too low level, because it's LLVM. And for instance, here, um, the IBI is resolved that you don't know it's a structure in some architectures. So once we've got this dwarf information, we pair them, we create our own type system. Uh, why do we do that? Because you don't want users to depend on LLVM or Clang header, which can be quite huge. Uh, so we've got all the C types that can exist in the world, and we can const qualify them. So once we have a function type, how do we call it? We generate something that we call with a lot of inspiration wrappers. And uh, it's, it's a small C function which just makes the glue, and we ask Clang to generate this. And this has the same glue as libffi, and it just works. So here's a usage example. Uh, here you are, we are using, uh, we are making an OpenGL reader from Python, so we include here GRent, and we just use OpenGL and readGL. And here we can use, uh, we can see here that we read a uh, field from a structure, we print it, and it just works. Uh, so you have a, a lot of examples in the GitHub, if you want to see that a lot of use cases. What is the time? Okay. Um, something I've been working on the last few weeks is using uh, Dwarf information embedded in the shared library. So for instance, here I'm compiling libarchive with uh, debug info. I'm loading this uh, using Dragon FFI, and I can use every function, every structure that is defined in this library directly without using any header file. And uh, this is uh, the exact example of, uh, of libarchive when you can just read the files that are in a, in a library. Uh, here we can see we can just pass a C string directly because we know it takes this const char star, so we can convert Python string to this, and so on. Uh, so this is still experimental. There are issues like debug informations can be used. Uh, so I've done a small pass that tried to strip and take only anything we need. So for instance, we can divide by two and something. The thing for Uh you have a dwarf information for every compilation you need, so we could merge all of this one into a big one, which would be smaller. And other idea I have is to make some kind of static FFI compiler. So you say, this is my shared library, and generates me only the information I need, and the wrappers into a shared library, which can be used for FFI. 
Uh, other thing, the binary size is quite huge. So there are some ideas to, to limit them. And something also quite, quite cool is to use EasyJIT, which is the project presented just after me, uh, to optimize the glue so you have only a basic block to call a function from Python and whatever. And time is over. <laughs>